The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today is a special day here on the Plateau of Lang. It is the third anniversary of the Whisper in Darkness YouTube channel. It's hard to believe that it has uh, already been three years since I uh, started doing this stuff, and uh, I uh, wanted to do a little, have a little bit of a celebration. Being a content creator is a uh, it can be a challenge from time to time, so uh, making it to three years uh, feels like uh, a milestone. And uh, I'm uh, glad that uh, everyone is uh, able to make it today. We've got a couple things planned. We've got a... Uh, we are going to do a playthrough, which we will get to in a moment. I also have a, a couple of giveaways that I'm going to be doing, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, I will go over those uh, in a moment once we have a few more people in the uh, have uh, logged on. I will go over the giveaways that I'm going to be doing. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, chat and have some fun. And uh, hopefully uh, maybe get uh, one or two games in, uh, in this morning, depending on uh, how things go. Before uh, I get started, I would uh, like to... Th uh, we are actually, uh, I can just jump into uh, what we are going to play. We are going to go uh, right back to the beginning today. We are playing Return to the Dunwich Legacy, The Adventures of Ash Can Pete, one of my uh, favorite solo investigators. Uh, I have only played the uh, first scenario in uh, Return to the Extracurricular Activity, so uh, today we will either play uh, Extracurricular Activity and or uh, the house always wins. I would love to play, uh, uh, to stream long enough to play uh, the Miskatonic Museum since that is the first scenario that I uh, ever played uh, on this channel, but uh, we'll see how, uh, how things go if we can uh, get that far. Before I get started, I would uh, like to thank the, uh, the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support I'd also like to take this time to support to uh, to thank everyone out there for their uh, amazing support over the years. Uh, it has been uh, truly uh, humbling to uh, to see uh, all the people who have uh, taken the time out of their day to watch a video or comment or like or do any of those things that uh, show me that uh, that you're paying attention to the content that I'm making. I have met some uh, truly uh, awesome people playing this uh, this game, and uh, I hope to meet uh, many more before the uh, before this all wraps up. I guess as you get older, you can, you become a little. Uh, as I've gotten a bit older, I've uh, realized that things like this are are pretty fleeting. You know, uh, three, four, five, six years, and then uh, people move on to other things, and they end up doing other things. And those people that you uh, you knew uh, often, uh, sometimes you get separated, and you don't uh, see them anymore. So I'm uh, trying to uh, savor this moment, and uh, and uh, just uh, thank I'm thankful for everyone who has taken the time to uh, to pay attention to this little channel over the years. It uh, has evolved into uh, something that uh, I wasn't expecting. It has uh, changed uh, a little bit over the years. We've tried uh, a bunch of different things. Some have been successful, some not so successful. And uh, hopefully we uh, will continue to uh, experiment and change as uh, things continue. So uh, once again, thanks a lot, everyone, for your uh, tremendous support. It uh, means a lot to me. We are playing uh, Ashcan Pete today to uh, celebrate. This is a deck that I've had uh, quite a bit of success with uh, playing through uh, parts of the Circle Undone um, as well as extracurricular activity. This is a deck based on the deck Put the Dog in the Corner by Aram Horror that's uh, posted up over at Arkham DB. It, uh, it was uh, a deck that was exploiting Drawing Thin, Rabbit's Foot, and uh, Take Heart, but of course Drawing Thin is now on the, uh, on the list of taboos. Hello Lucas, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. Uh, hope things are, are great in Poland today. 
Yes, I, uh, my, I feel like my chest infection has finally uh, left after uh, a month and a half, so uh, hopefully there won't be any coughing today. The, uh, the deck was using Drawing Thin, Take Heart, and Rabbit's Foot. Drawing Thin, of course, is now on the taboo list, so I have removed that, as well as one copy of Rabbit's Foot, so I can add uh, three copies of uh, Glimmer of Hope in there to see. Uh, it's a card I've wanted to experiment with uh, since, uh, since it was spoiled uh, a couple months ago now. It has been since released, so uh, we'll see how that uh, works. Yes, Drawing Thin is uh, on the taboo list. It's uh, been there for a few months now. It's uh, Welcome to the stream, Hero Logic, Heroic Logic. It's uh, Yeah, it ended up on the taboo list pretty quickly. Uh, I believe it's worth two or three experience points now per copy, so uh, certainly an option for this deck going forward. This uh, deck uh, does uh, pick up... Um, Scrapper pretty early, so you want that six experience point so you can get Scrapper. And then, uh, yeah, it doesn't need a whole lot of experience to run. It's a, it's a pretty solid deck right out of the gate. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it does uh, today. We are set up and ready to go uh, in Octagon. Glad you could make it, everyone. Uh, I have. Uh, I was going to uh, start off with extracurricular activity today, uh, but uh, I figured I might uh, let you in the chat decide uh, whether I go House Always Wins first or extracurricular activity first. Uh, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, prizes I'm going to be giving away today. I have a copy of uh, the Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion, so if uh, that is something that you haven't picked up already, then uh, we will be giving away a copy of that to uh, a lucky uh, person. This, of course, has, uh, has uh, Rita Young and whatnot in it, and uh, some very tough, uh, leads into a, a pretty tough campaign. So, uh, so we'll be giving away that a bit later. And I also have a, I don't know if I can get this all on, uh, on the camera, but I have a playmat from Arkham Knights 19. This was the... Uh, the playmat that they were selling for the Mythos Busters uh, TFA Iron Man at uh, Arkham Knights 2019. Uh, the only way you can get one of these is if you were at Arkham Knights 2019 playing in the Iron Man. So I will be giving away one of these. It's got uh, the Mythos Busters as Yithians, and uh, we all know they are Yithians um, to begin with. So it's not, uh, you know, it's the artist didn't really have to go stretch too far. To, uh, to capture them in their full glory. So we will be giving away uh, this playmat as well. So I will uh, look forward to that. So uh, what uh, what do we want to play today? Do we want to start off with... Uh, do we want to start off with uh, curricular, extracurricular activity or House Always Wins? Uh, I haven't actually played House Always Wins in... Uh, in return to yet so that might be uh... hi juicy welcome to the stream thanks a lot for dropping by glad you could make it so uh, I think we'll uh, I guess we'll start off with extracurricular activity I realized uh, a bit late uh, that uh, I didn't have that deck uh, loaded up so let's uh, do that now Hi, Lograk. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Thank you very much for the uh, the birthday wishes. So now we have to set this up. Uh, where did I put the setup instructions for this? I feel like I have them somewhere. Uh, yes, there they are. Okay, so perform setup as indicated when gathering encounter sets, yada, yada, yada. We know that already. And randomly choose between Orin Library and Warren Observatory. Put the chosen location into play along with the rest of the starting locations. Remove the other locations from the game. Uh, if you have completed, return to the house always wins. Search the gathered encounter sets for one copy of Enthralled Security Guard and spawn it at the administration building. Uh, I think we'll just pick uh, rather than uh, choose between Orn Library. 
and uh, Warren Observatory at random will just play the Warren Observatory since that is uh, what is different about this scenario. One of the changes that they made when they uh, when they put out the return to box, uh, I always get a uh, warm feeling inside when I get to play uh, when I revisit the Dunwich Legacy. It uh, being the first uh, the first full campaign that was released for the game. Hi, Folamus. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. What uh, what made you create the channel? Was it just for curiosity, or I wanted to do something more than just playing? That's a good question, Lucas. Uh, yeah, I had been uh, playing the uh, Lord of the Rings LCG, and I was uh, always impressed by what uh, Sean and Brandon had done over at uh, Cardboard of the Rings, as well as some of the other uh, content uh, creators. Uh, with their podcasts and uh, playthroughs. I'd also been watching a lot of uh, Netrunner podcasts and uh, channels at the time and wanted to uh, wanted to uh, do something for the Arkham Horror LCG when it was released. Hi, Troy. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, yes, I will be... Uh, I will put up the podcasts uh, for the videos... Uh, uh, as well, I uh, yeah, I've fallen behind in that. Uh, when you're doing uh, something like this, it always seems like you're uh, you're running a little bit behind. Uh, so uh, I will uh, endeavor to uh, to get to that. Yeah, so I was I was uh, impressed by a lot of the content that was being created for Netrunner and uh, Lord of the Rings. Hi, Sue Sh Sue C. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. And. Uh, yeah, so when they announced the Arkham Horror LCG, I uh, I decided to jump in. Uh, there is a lost episode of the uh, of the uh, of this channel that uh, didn't make it onto the channel. My uh, the first episode I recorded was uh, it ended up being about three and a half hours long, and it was a review of all the cards in the Dunwich Legacy, all of the investigators, as well as a playthrough of extracurricular activity with uh, with uh, skids and Jim hi hello Brock 99 welcome to the stream yeah it was uh, the the episode turned out to be something like three hour almost four hours long and I was so uh, so unhappy with the final product that I deleted it and it was uh, only my uh, my wife Tracy who uh, encouraged me to uh, to give it another shot, and so I ended up uh, recording the I believe it's a four player uh, playthrough of uh, Miskatonic Museum that turned out to be the first episode. Whoa, what a what a uh, uh, a bit of a disaster that was. I I don't think I even referred to most of the investigators by their correct names half the time. So uh, yeah, pretty ambitious to play four-handed as your first uh, as your first episode. But uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, since then. Uh, you know, the episode lengths have come down. And hi, uh, Robert. Glad you could make it to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we uh, yeah. So the episodes have uh, changed a little bit. They've gotten a bit shorter because uh, people tend to prefer. I think when you're uh, when you start off being a content creator, you don't realize that uh, most people only watch about thirty percent of the stuff you put out to begin with. So uh, so making really really long things is uh, is not really in your best interest. Uh, the the playthroughs, of course, there's not much you can do about that. I've I've thought about breaking them up into to smaller chunks, but uh, the the game doesn't really lend itself to that. So uh, we uh, we end up playing uh, all the way through. So we uh, we start off as usual at uh, the Miskatonic Quad. It has the it's a three shroud location with zero clues, and it is a uh, it has the resign action. Uh, we need to draw a weakness for this uh, for this adventure. Hi, Doobies. Glad you could make it to the stream. Uh, hope you're doing well. Doobies, of course, is the uh, the player who was uh, raising money for the Australian wildfires. 
I understand they came uh, precariously close uh, to where he was living. So uh, good on uh, Doobies for uh, raising money for uh, that uh, that uh... oh screen. Yeah, good idea. There we go. Nice. Uh, hi Jacob. Thank you for the uh, reminder. That would have been embarrassing. Record an entire episode with my uh, with my patrons up. Uh, yeah, so great on Doobies for raising uh, raising money for that uh, for that thing. Uh, so where are we? We were uh, grabbing a weakness, and it is going to be indebted. All right, I always seem to uh, to draw indebted. It's one of the weaknesses I seem to see the most. So we're going to start the game with two fewer resources, but we know we don't have to worry about uh, having any more, uh, any more, uh... yes, uh, Lucas, uh, when you become a content creator, there is a lot to learn. Uh, I've learned a lot about, uh, I guess, the inner workings of YouTube, as well as social media, um, Recording, video editing, all of that stuff. Just trying to, in, and then learning how to promote yourself on the various uh, uh, social media platforms that are out there. It has, uh, there is a bit of a, and even just, uh, you know, turning it into a record, turning those recordings into a podcast for the people who don't ha have the time to watch a video and uh, getting that podcast up on uh, the various platforms like Apple and Google Play and whatnot. Um, yeah, there's a lot to, uh, to sort of, uh, pick up along the way. It can be a real, uh, uh it's been really interesting and, uh, the skills are valuable. I mean, I think I'll be using them in, uh, in, uh, my job as I, uh, as I go forward. I think we're ready to draw our opening hand. So, uh, let's do that now. We'll shuffle our deck up and we'll see how we do. Oh, so I don't have art for winging it now. That's weird. All right, well, that's okay. Uh, we've got uh, Overpower Arcane uh, Studies, Madame LaBranche, winging it and Overpower. So let's uh, mulligan the Overpowers. Hi, Sarman uh, Garnier, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of different platforms out there and, and sometimes it's uh, hard to uh, make sure that you uh, you're getting your name out there on all of the different, uh, all of the different platforms that uh, that are available. So we're drawing three extra cards. There is our weakness, racked by nightmares, a lucky, and a live and learn. So we're going to get one more card, which is going to be resourceful. Yeah, and I think, uh, Simon, there are different communities that hang out in in the various places. I know there's the, the Facebook group is a big one, but uh, when I started out, I was also posting on uh, Fantasy Flight Games forums. I was posting on Card Game DB, uh, Reddit, and uh, Twitter, and, and uh, Board Game Geek as well. And I think there are different communities that hang out at each of those. And so trying to get players from all of those to come over and, uh, and look at your content is, uh, is, uh, is the challenge. So I think we're ready to go. We're gonna only have three resources. So we're only going to get uh, one, we're only gonna get Arcane Studies or Madame LaBranche out. Uh, so let's get, if we get Arcane Studies, we can get LeBranche out next turn and get a, and get a, uh, a resource. So we'll do that is our first action. Uh, as our second action, I think we'll use Duke's ability to, uh, investigate. We'll move to uh, the Humanities building and investigate. It's a three shroud location with two clues. And at the end of your turn, if you are in the humanities building, discard the X cards from your deck where X is the amount of horror on you. Hi, David, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. It's uh, hard to believe it's already been uh, three years since I, uh, I started this, but uh, I'm glad everyone could make it today. 
we are doing an investigate uh, four versus four versus three. Um, I guess we'll just go and see how we do. We get a minus one, so uh, we do grab a clue. And we can pitch a card to ready Duke. Uh, what do we want to pitch? That's the question. We've got a lot of good stuff in our hand. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to pitch the live and learn to ready Duke. And then we will do him again to try to get this final clue. Chaos bag gives us a zero, so uh, we quickly grab those two clues. Yeah, that's the other thing about this game is uh, Halo Brock 99 is that uh, there has been so much release that uh, not all players uh, are at the same are, are able to keep up with it and uh, be up to date on all of the scenarios. Some groups. Um, play slower than others and so they may only be back playing the Forgotten Age still and so content that you make for say Circle Undone or Dream Eaters uh, if they want to avoid spoilers they uh, they tend to not come to that content and that's something you really notice as uh, when I look back through the list uh, of my videos is that a lot of the, vi the old videos about the Dunwich Legacy and say the path to Carcosa have a lot of views while uh, viewership has dropped off as uh, in the Forgotten Age and Circle Undone as, as you know you naturally get uh, players dropping away from the game maybe because they don't have time maybe because they don't have you know any players in their area uh, or they just don't like it I mean that happens too um, I know for myself, one of the reasons I started this channel is because I don't really, there's nobody else in my town that plays this, so uh, at least that I know of. Uh, the local stores uh, did carry it briefly, but then uh, they stopped because there just wasn't, wasn't the market for it. So it's not a game that uh, has a lot of presence where I live, and so if I want to play uh, with other people, uh, I have to drive an hour and a half north or south and then uh, then there are some players that I know in those uh, communities so but uh, yeah there's uh, the spoilers uh, people want to try to avoid them and so uh, they don't see they don't see the content David uh, McAndrew says I really like your content you make about the player cards it's always help always helps me give insight about cards I should include in decks I also like your videos where you focus on specific investigators yeah, I'm uh, the uh, reviews. I won't lie; they uh, they take probably the most time of uh, of all the content to make because I try to be pretty thorough about them, and uh, and try to provide some insights about the cards. Uh, I wish I could do more um, more videos about specific investigators because I do like doing the deep dives. And uh, really digging into what those investigators can do. Unfortunately, uh, they also uh, are very time-consuming. So it's it's a matter of trying to ch pick and choose which uh, which uh, content uh, that I create. So I may end up doing some more. Uh, I would like to revisit the in the know series. There are a couple videos there. I think that would be uh, nice to do as well as uh, do some of the specific investigators. I had plans to do one on uh, Father Matteo back in uh, Forgotten Age that uh, never got done. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. Thanks, Troy. Oh, I didn't realize that, uh, Tim, I didn't realize that TTS lets you save games. I think, I think Octagon does it let you? I feel like it, it lets you save decks, but I'm not sure it lets you save actual games. I tend to just leave it up if I'm if I need to stop, but that's pretty rare. Uh, so where are we? We are in the uh, I guess we are in the upkeep phase. So we draw a leather coat during upkeep, and 
we will go to the first myth first mythos phase of the game we have uh and we will draw our first encounter card which is going to be eager for death test two willpower increase the skill difficulty by one for each damage on you if you fail take two horror all right so we're going uh four versus two is our first test chaos bag says skull that is a minus one so uh eager for death our first encounter card and uh, we easily handle it so not too shabby all right we are going to keep on trucking here i guess we've got the warren observatory that's the uh that's one of the new locations but first we're going to play uh madame labranche for two resources and then we will use her ability her free triggered ability to gain a resource Hi, Stuart. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Glad you enjoy the uh, the playthroughs. They are a lot of fun to do, especially uh, I really uh, I really enjoy uh, streaming uh, when I'm able to stream. It's always nice to have uh, people to chat with while I play, and uh, sometimes they uh, they make some pro plays. There was a I can't remember the uh, the person's name, but they. Uh, they pointed out a mistake that uh, Nate and I made when we were playing through uh, Return to the Last King that would have allowed us to uh, both resign. Really, really smart, uh, really smart play. I wish uh, he had been there during the stream. It would have helped us out a great deal. And that's the nice thing about having a having a community like this around that. Uh, you know they point out like as 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 I do my reviews and whatnot I I get comments from people that point out things that I didn't even see and so it's nice to uh, to have that back and forth so you get to see uh, how some people will play and then that uh, may twig something in me that thinks oh maybe I should do it this way or that way and then uh, everybody's game improves I guess we're going to use Duke to go to the Warren Observatory. It's a four shroud location with one clue. After you discover one or more clues at the Warren Observatory, discard three cards from the top of your deck for each clue just discovered. All right, so we have a, it's four versus four. Uh, I guess we'll just, we've got a lucky if we need it. So let's go four versus four. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. That is in lucky range. So let's uh, use our lucky. So we grab this clue. Now we have to do something here. After you discover one or more clues at Warren Obser Observatory, discard three cards from the top of your deck for each clue just discovered so there goes a glimmer of hope an overpower and deny existence so we've got the three clues that we need to advance so let's uh, spend them uh, act 1b the head janitor shuffle the encounter discard pile and the set aside jazz mulligan into the encounter deck so we only had one card in the uh, encounter discard pile, so no problem there. And in goes Jazz. Probably should have brought some sort of uh, fine clothes to... Uh... Uh, to uh, deal with Jazz. So yeah, we have uh, discarded the three cards from the top of our deck, and we have one action remaining. We might as well keep on moving. Halo Brock ninety nine says there is some questionable. 
not sure I know that word in the art art in the the Arkham Horror LCG, but most part is fantastic. I'm not just saying that because I have a thing for Magali. Well, everybody. Uh, Oh, that is good. Very good, Robert. Yeah, Ash can Pete. Re Ash can Pete uh, Wednesday. That's right. That works out nicely. So we uh, we keep on trucking here. We are at the Miskatonic Quad, so we can head over to the Students Union Building next turn and uh, get this. Uh, hopefully, find jazz. So. We are going to the upkeep. We draw a fight or flight. And uh, we will uh, keep on going here. And for we're on our second mythos phase to, uh, to Doom. Next encounter card is going to be Light of Aphorgomon Peril. You must attach Light of Aphorgomon to either the current agenda or the current act. Limit one per agenda or act. Treat all damage as direct damage and all horror as direct horror. So we'll attach that to the uh, the act card since I'm hoping we'll be able to uh, to get rid of that uh, s quicker than the agenda is going to flip. Yeah, I'm uh, right now. I think the one of my goals for the channel is uh, is to try to get up to my. Uh, to uh to 50 subscribers on twitch because that uh uh if i stream on twitch enough that gets me to affiliate status which would be uh nice to have yes this is a start of a new campaign samuel this is uh, ash can pete running through uh, return to the dunwich legacy and i'll be streaming this one probably over the next uh, next couple weeks as we uh we uh play through this yeah, if I could get Twitch uh, affiliate status on Twitch, that would be nice. Uh, I've also started another channel just for my Let's Plays. That was one of the experiments I uh, I did last summer was I was experimenting playing some uh, Cthulhu um, horror-related video games on the channel, but I kind of felt that it was uh, it distracted from the main stuff, so I've decided to h hive that off into its own channel. So. If you uh, are interested in uh, video games and uh, or you just like to the sound of my voice, uh, head over to the uh, Terrible Old Man on YouTube and uh, subscribe there. Right now I'm doing a, a playthrough of The Sinking City, which I bounced off of, uh, but I'm uh, enjoying it this time around. And uh, I'm also doing a playthrough of Ori in the Blind Forest uh, for uh, uh, in preparation for the release of the... Uh, the ex um, I want to call it expansion, the uh, sequel that will be coming out on March 11th. So we can uh, we can do some uh, Duke action here. Let's uh, use Duke to go to the Students' Union building. One shroud location with two clues. And uh, after the Students' Union building is revealed, we put the set-aside dormitories into play. So out come the dormitories, and so we are going four versus one to grab a clue. Thank you very much for the uh, for the subscribe. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, skull, that's a minus one. So we grab a clue. And we can do that again. We'll pitch the fight or flight to Ready Duke. And we will go four versus two, uh, four versus one again. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two. And that puts us, uh, we've cleared that location out. Now we can actually uh, take one action to spend a clue to discard the top five cards of the encounter deck, top ten, if there's one player in the game. So let's go see if we can find, uh, find our buddy Jazz. So we'll shuffle the, uh, no, we drew one. So let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. No jazz in the top 10. So uh, we will have to try that again next turn. And uh, yeah, I think we'll do the uh, our first giveaway here in about 20 minutes. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll be giving away, uh, for those of you who just joined us, I'm going to be giving away this copy of the Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion. So if you don't have this, uh, you'll have a chance to win one for yourself. And I will also be giving away this uh, super cool play mat that was... Uh, that uh, was uh, being sold at Arkham Knights 2019. It features all of our friends from the Mythos Busters as Yithians in their natural form, of course, because we know they are Yithians. Uh, this was, uh, you could only get this playmat at uh, Arkham Knights if you're playing in the Iron Man, so uh, you'll have a chance to, to win one of those. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so what are we doing here? Uh, yeah, so we're done, done our turn. Upkeep, we draw an overpower. And we will go to the mythos phase. Uh, our next mythos card is going to be, oh, Haunting Recollections. This is one of the, uh, the new ones from one of the uh, new sets. For each card in your hand, if there is a copy of that card in your discard pile, take one horror to a maximum of three horror. If you take no horror from this effect, discard the top three cards of your deck. So we need to check to see if there are copies in my discard pile. Uh, there is an overpower, uh, but there's no leather coat or um, resourceful. So it looks like I take one horror. I do, and because of the light of Afargomon, it is direct horror, so I can't uh, do anything about that. So easy enough there. Uh, so we're gonna continue. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the subscribe. Let me see if I can see who did it. Oh yes, thank you very much, Robert. You rock. Thank you very much, Lograk, for the uh, subscription. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard with the green screen. Sometimes they uh, no anyone can enter. Doesn't matter where you're from. Everybody can enter the uh, for the uh, when I give for the giveaways. So uh, d wherever you are, let's do let's spend another clue to uh, get rid of uh, some more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, uh, no, uh, jazz in the top twenty. So we're gonna have to go. Uh, we're gonna have to go get some more clues. So let's. Uh, I guess we will. Uh, we will just move. Um, no, we should have two actions left. So we will move up to the Miskatonic Quad, and then we will use uh, we will use Duke to move into the uh, I could, the. Do we want to go Science Building or Administration Building? Uh, yeah, Lograk, usually Jazz, for me, he's on the top. Usually I don't have to wait too long before Jazz shows up, but today he's being a little shy, so... We will go to the Science Building. After the Science Building is revealed, we put a set the Set-Aside Alchemy Lab into play. So we will do that. And we will go... Uh, there's one clue there. Uh, and when you fail a willpower test in the science building, you take a damage. So we will have to, uh, so we're going four versus two. Chaos Bag says, um, Cultist, that is a minus one, minus three if there are ten or more cards in your discard pile. There are not ten, there are only six, so we do grab this clue. 
Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Doovies, for the donation. That's fantastic. Thank you for the resources. That will uh, that will do. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Hi, Darren. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it to uh, to the uh, third anniversary of the Whisper in Darkness. We are playing Return to the Dunwich Legacy and uh, just chatting about the game and. Uh, a little bit about content creation, so I guess that's our turn again. So we've got another clue. Maybe we can find uh, Jazz the next turn. We get another fight or flight, and we go to the Mythos phase. Four of seven. Uh, we get another Haunting Recollections. So, yeah, we end up taking... Wow, this is getting painful. Um, for each card in your hand, if there's a copy of that card in your discard pile, take one horror. So I do have a fight or flight and a, uh, I have a fight or flight and an overpower. So I take two horror. Ouch. And it's direct horror too, because of that light of Aphrogomon. Wow. That is painful. Can't uh, take much more of that. No test on that either. So, uh. Wow, that hurts. Um, hopefully we can find Jazz this time and uh, just get to get it out of the way. Let's uh, spend that clue and find Jazz, hopefully. Uh, where are we going here? Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... He was number nine out of uh, ten. So yeah, he was uh, five cards from the bottom. So yeah, he was uh, he was hiding this time for sure. So he is at our location. Uh, we need to uh, now. I think we advance uh, when we take control of him. So while Jazz is not controlled, we parlay test three intellect uh, I have a bunch of resources here that I can spend so let's go let's spend all three and then we can use actually uh, uh, we can use yeah we'll use her to get one later so we go up to five versus three to take control of Jazz Mulligan. Chaos Bag says Skull. That is a minus one again. So we uh, grab Jazz. All right. And I think we want to try. We've got plenty of time. We're only four Doom in to, uh, to the seven. So we can easily uh, head back and... Uh, Head back to uh, the quad and then go to the administration building later. And we can pull the faculty office, maybe get uh, a VP there, and then we can head to the dormitories and finish this off. If we survive, if we take any more. Uh, the light of Afar Goman, though, is going to go away because we took control of uh, uh, the jazz. So, if the Alchemy Lab location is not in play, put it into play. If you are on Agenda 1 or 2, spawn the set aside experiment there. So, we will do that now. And. If you have completed the House Always Wins, put the set-aside alchemical concoction into play. If extracurricular is the first scenario, remove it from the game instead. So We have advanced to campus safety, so we need to find and complete objectives on another encounter card. Typically, I like to go to 
to the faculty office and get that uh, VP and then head to the dormitories to save the students. So that's what we're going to try to do. We draw a magnifying glass. That will be helpful. And we're going to the next mythos phase. Five of seven. Our encounter card is going to be in an infinite doorway attached to your location as an additional cost to move into or out of attached location. Discard the top card of your deck. If the discarded card is a weakness, draw it. Otherwise, for each copy of the discarded card in your hand or play area, you must either take one horror or discard that card. Wow. Okay. For each copy of the discarded card in your hand or play area, you must either take one horror or discard that card. Okay, so I have to discard it from my hand. All right. Lots of horror in this uh, in this particular one. I didn't run into many of these cards the first time I played this, so uh, let's use Duke to move to the administration building. Four shroud location with one clue. After administration building is revealed, put the set aside faculty offices into play at the end of your turn. If you are in the administration building, discard the top card of your deck. So we need to trigger infinite doorway, uh, discard the top card. It is track shoes. It is a, that is the sole copy of track shoes in the deck, so we don't have to worry about uh, infinite doorway. We'll go get the faculty office. The knight is still young. And it is two, uh, whoops, we uh, do not need to advance it yet. Uh, so we are doing an investigate. We are four versus four. Uh, we can go um, we can actually play the magnifying glass in the uh, player window since it's fast and that will give us a plus one so we're at five versus four chaos bag says that's another skull so that's minus one so we're getting lucky on the skulls and whatnot. Uh, I think we'll discard another fight or flight uh, to ready Duke. And we can make our way to the... Now we have to grab somebody. Hi Solar Jetman, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Yeah, we are celebrating three years on the channel today, so uh, I guess it is, uh, what would it be, a toddler now? The channel is officially a toddler. So if I move here, I'm going to get somebody to fight. Do I want to do that? Uh, I've got an overpower, but I don't have... Yeah, let's just move in. because we're going to get uh, somebody to fight here anyway. So after faculty offices is revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a humanoid enemy and spawn it here. Shuffle the encounter deck. Yeah, the channel can finally walk on its own. Well, no, it requires a lot of uh, feeding and care, unfortunately. I wish the channel uh, uh, could walk on its own. What resolution am I going for? I'm going to be going for... I'm going to... Uh, I am going to grab these clues here at the faculty office and then head back to the dormitories and rescue the students. So uh, we won't end up having to put any uh, bad tokens in the bag. So we search the deck for a humanoid. Now we could grab our friend the... Uh, there's only two cards left in the encounter deck. Uh, we could grab our friend the wizard. 
but we can't kill the wizard in one turn. He's going to hit us for two horror. Uh, I do have some soak. We have never been able to kill the experiment. Yeah, killing the experiment takes a bit of work. I have killed it with a solo Wendy deck that was built by, uh, uh, I believe it's Sergeant Mook over on Arkham DB. You basically just uh, ramp up Wendy and uh, and uh, kill it in one. I believe it's one or two shots. You can kill the experiment. I think I've only killed him once or twice using other investigators. Uh, I can't kill this chump this turn. I don't know. I sort of feel like the other humanoids are all threes or twos. I could just spawn a thrall, but I don't get a VP for a thrall. Um, yeah, let's be daring. Let's grab the let's grab the uh, the wizard. So we're gonna take a hit, but we've got some guys who can soak it for us. Uh, so we are gonna go four versus, we're gonna attack the wizard four versus four with Duke. And we are going to commit a an overpower to that to go uh, six versus four. Chaos Bag says, Actually, I want, I think I need to use my resourceful. Uh, choose a card. Let me see. I want to check my, uh, now do I want the, yeah, I want the fight or flight back. So let's play the resourceful as well. So that will be uh, four, five, six, seven versus four. Chaos bag says minus two, so we do succeed. So we're gonna draw a card. There is a live and learn, and we get the uh, fight or flight out of our discard pile. So we can use that for the next attack. Um, we might as well use Madame Labranche to get a resource. And he takes two damage, of course. And we go to the enemy phase, so we're going to take some damage. Or take some horror, sorry. Damage to, uh, to horror. And a damage. We can just take the damage. And that is going to be it. During our upkeep, we grab an Arcane Studies. Six of seven Doom. Mythos card is going to be Beyond the Veil, of course. Uh, and it is going to surge, so we're going to take 10 damage if we run out of cards. It surges into Eldritch Accord. Peril, you may draw one card. You may choose and discard up to two cards from your hand. Test X willpower. If you fail, take two horror. X equals the number of cards in your hand when this test begins. Okay, so we want to discard a couple of cards. We don't need the Arcane Studies or the Leather Coat. So that will uh, reduce it to a two. Uh, test it's a pact. This guy doesn't do any. Oh, it is a pact. He attacks me. Oh, crap. When an engaged investigator draws a hex or pact card, Wizard of Yogg-Sothoth attacks that investigator. Okay, so we are being attacked. Uh, so I guess we're going to do... We'll put two horror on Duke and one damage. And... We're going to go four versus two on the willpower test. Chaos bag says minus one. So uh, 
That's the nice thing about this particular scenario is the chaos bag is so kind. There's uh, all those minus ones in the bag that make this uh, scenario pretty, uh, pretty easy. Um, yes, it is just about time for our uh, first giveaway. So I think we'll do that now. Uh, I am going to be giving away a copy of the uh, Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion right here. Hopefully the green screen doesn't uh, screw it up too much. Here it is in 3D. So uh, what you can do to enter uh, enter this draw, what we'll do is uh, if you want, I will uh, put my email address in the chat. Uh, if you can uh, send me... Uh, Send your answer to uh, this email address. And uh, the question will be, what is the first scenario that I played on the channel? That is the uh, skill testing question. So uh, what is the uh, first scenario that we played uh, that I did play on the channel? Uh, you can send your answer to manfromling at gmail.com. Put, uh, put in the email description, uh, Circle Undone Giveaway, and uh, I will uh, draw from everybody who sends me, uh, sends me the answer after this uh, stream is done. So uh, again, uh, send your answer to uh, manfromling at gmail.com. Put uh, Circle Undone Giveaway in the subject line. And the skill testing question is, uh, what was the first scenario that I played on the, uh, on the channel? And uh, you could walk away with a copy of the Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion. So if you don't have that expansion already, uh, this is your chance to win one. And uh, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, I will uh, send it anywhere. So, uh, so uh, get cracking. We'll give away the playmat uh, a little bit later here. Uh, so we made it through that mythos phase, barely. Uh, lots of damage and horror being thrown around. Uh, so we will need to kill this guy and then uh, head off. So let's go... Uh, we need to attack him, so we will go... We will use fight or flight. So fast, play only during your turn until the end of the round. You get plus X combat and plus X agility, where X is the amount of horror on you. I have three horror, so we're going. Uh, we're going to exhaust. Um, uh, so we exhaust Duke. So we get uh, seven versus four. Chaos Bag says there's another skull. That's a minus one. So uh, this guy, uh, the wizard, dies. And we get a VP out of it. So a little bit risky taking him, but uh, we do manage to, uh, to do okay. Now we need a couple of clues here. Um, Benjamin asks, what are your... F Benjamin asks, what are your feelings on Innsmouth being next? Uh, I'm uh, very excited to see what they do with the uh, Innsmouth Conspiracy. That is the uh, next deluxe expansion. They spoiled that, uh, that last week. Uh, that uh, Agents of Cthulhu uh, encounter set from the core set hasn't seen a lot of action. So uh, this will be a chance to, uh, to dust off that in encounter set. Uh, there are lots of, of course, a lot of uh, famous NPCs from uh, the Innsmouth story that we will probably be encountering. So that's always nice. Lots of iconic locations. We've got uh, Innsmouth itself as well as Devil's Reef. Uh, so I'm looking forward to... Uh, to uh, and uh, the one that I can't pronounce, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I'm going to screw it up for sure. Yaha Inthlai, I believe, maybe. Uh, so that's uh, another uh, a place we can visit. So lots of iconic locations and uh, NPCs to meet. So I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, designer Matt Newman does with that uh, particular uh, story. Uh, we can pitch the live and learn 
to ready Duke, and I'm going to use Madame Labranche to draw a card. There's a take heart, and we will investigate. We are going four versus two. Chaos Bag says skull again, so we grab this clue. And. Have you read much Lovecraft the slash the novellas? asks Halo Brock. Uh, wow, Robert, thank you very much. Robert, uh, Robert uh, about one of the uh, patrons of the show, says, if you want to do a bonus giveaway, I'll send out a copy of Point of No Return. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Robert. If you are interested in picking yourself up a copy of Point of No Return, the... Uh, well, until next week, the latest Mythos pack in uh, in the Dream Eaters cycle. Just uh, send me a uh, send me an email to the email address with a point of no return, and I'll enter your name into a draw for that. So uh, thank you very much, Robert, for your for your generosity. That's awesome. So we've got one more clue to grab. I think I'm gonna. I've only got one resource. I could go three versus two and pitch the take heart, and if I fail, I gain a bunch of stuff. Actually, no, I'm uh, four versus, I could be four versus two. Yeah, let's go four versus two uh, for that last clue. I forgot about the magnifying glass. Chaos bag says minus four. Okay, well, we were due for, we were due for one bad pull at some point, so that will be a, a failure. We draw a chair's keepsake during the upkeep phase. And we are advancing this turn. This mythos phase we advance. So each investigator with five or more cards in his or her discard pile take one horror. Each investigator with ten or more cards in the discard pile takes two or more. So we have two, we have ten cards, so we're taking two horror. Yikes. Um Yes, uh, Folomos. If you're interested in picking up the point of no return, send it to the uh, the email address I posted in the chat. I'll post it again here for you, and just put uh, point of, point of no return giveaway, and uh, no skill testing question or anything like that. Just uh, if you if you're interested in a copy, send uh, send me an email, and we will uh, we will get that out to you. So I'm taking two horror. Wow, this is painful. Um, well, I guess Madame Labranche is going to go bye-bye, and we're going to take one. So, yeah, the horror is really uh, added up here. Maybe we won't be able to save the students. I think if I lose Jazz, if I have to lose Jazz, then we just, we just, uh, um spend the clues we need to to uh, to get the victory point here at the faculty offices and we'll be done with it. But we do have a cherished keepsake in our hand so uh, we can get that down. Uh, if the players have completed the house always wins uh, advance to 2b otherwise 2a so we go to 2a each investigator's maximum hand size is reduced by 3 so that's fine. We are at uh, five hand size, and we draw an encounter card, which is going to be Visions of Future Past. Test five willpower for each point you fail by. Discard the top card of your deck. Uh, we are going four versus uh, five. That's going to be rough with the uh, the Beyond the Veil in our uh, in our threat area. Minus one. So we are only two cards. A lucky and a take heart. We are still alive, so we need to grab this clue and get out of here. So we can grab this clue, one, two, then we can go to the dormitories. So first of all, we need to play the Cherished Keepsake, for sure. Now we need to get this clue, we're going four versus two. Uh, actually, five versus two. Chaos bag says minus two, so we grab this clue. 
And we're going to have to discard a card at the admin building. So we're going to go one, two, three. Yeah. So we'll discard a card at the admin building. It's a mag glass. And yeah, that is going to be our turn. So we're going to go one, two, three next turn to get to the dormitories and then hopefully finish off the game the following turn after that. Uh, we are going to go, uh, we draw winging it, one doom of three, and our encounter card is going to be the enthralled security guard. Uh, he is a hunter with retaliate. Uh, David McAndrew asks, what's your favorite scenario in the Dunwich Legacy? I am partial to uh, Blood on the Altar, or I kind of like Miskatonic Museum too, just to play. Although uh, Where Doom Awaits is also a very good scenario, I find. Uh, so probably Blood on the Altar or Where Doom Awaits. So we grab this uh, enthralled security guard. He's going to take some time to kill. Um, after it is evaded, it is defeated. Fortunately, we have Duke here. He can take care of this guy, I think. So Duke will... Favorite investigator. Oh, dear. Um... I've had some really good games with really good campaigns with Zoe, so I quite like her. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't mind uh, where Doom awaits in solo. I've had good games and bad games, but uh, I've, I tend to play it in standalone mode, and so it's so the uh, the ending isn't uh, too bad if I if I screw it up. So. Um, favorite investigator, yeah, Zoe is really good. Um, I'm partial to investigators with high intellect, simply because I play a lot of solo, and having that five into like four or five intellect is pretty awesome. So I enjoyed Ursula. Uh, I played Norman through Dunwich Legacy twice. I quite enjoyed him. Uh, Ashcan, I love because he's. He's uh, the action advantage you can generate with Duke is fantastic. And uh, he's the only investigator I've beaten the secret name with. So uh, that's a big plus in his, uh, his, his favor as well. Uh, we've got... Yeah, I haven't played Mandy yet, uh, David. I've, uh, I haven't played... I've played uh, Tony and I've played... Luke and Patrice, but I haven't played Mandy or Tommy yet. So we're going to try to kill this enthralled security guard. So we are going to go first action four versus two. Skull, that's a minus one, so he takes two damage. Pitch the winging it to... Uh, he, I don't know. Do I want to pitch the wing yet or not? Yeah, I do, because that's that's where it needs to be played from. Uh, to ready Duke, and we will do it again. Four versus two. Chaos bag says, "Oh, there's the auto fail. First auto fail of the game." And. Uh, yeah, not much we can do about that. He has retaliate, so he's going to hit us for a damage. And, well, maybe we're not going to make it. Follow us. I made a video way back three years ago that shows you how to kill the experiment with Wendy. Um, basically, you're using... Now, how does... Uh, you're using double or nothing, the baseball bat, and... There's something else in the combination. And so you basically double or nothing a baseball bat and you hit it twice with the baseball bat and it, uh, and it dies. 
Uh, no, backstab. That was the other part. So you've got to backstab it and baseball bat it to death. And uh, if you've got double or nothing, you can kill it in, I believe it's two or three shots. But there is a video up on the, uh, up on the channel if you're interested in, uh, if you're, where, I, where I do play through that and we see, uh, you can see it in action. Yeah, the auto fail has put us in a bit of a problem because now we have one action left. And... Oh, that's right. Discard two. Okay, this is getting serious. Rabbit's foot and a glimmer of hope. Um, maybe I don't go for the... I've only got seven cards left. I'm going to have to discard two to get through that infinite doorway. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for the greetings and the congratulations. Yeah, three years. It's uh, When I started out, I didn't think I would make it uh, three months, much less three years. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, good to be able to celebrate uh, a milestone like this. So we have the option... can't really evade this guy um, so he's gonna attack us I could just try to hit him but I don't have I'd just be going two versus two and he's got retaliate and I'd lose two cards I think, given the situation that I am in at the moment, I am not going to go for the dormitories. I think I'm going to move back to faculty offices. I'm going to take the attack of opportunity from this chump discard my resourceful and my racked by nightmares and then I'm going to I'm going to uh, use the free triggered ability to get R1 so we will just uh, we will just end the game just like that and uh, not have to worry about uh, about getting to the dormitories that's a bit disappointing but uh, not much we could have done there uh, five cards left in our deck we are probably going to be take at least one more attack uh, from the uh, security guard uh, yeah we just had to I think we just had to leave that would uh, it was going to be too difficult I don't think I was going to have enough time to get through this uh, infinite doorway and down to the dormitories to save the students so we'll uh, cut our losses and uh, so we will pick up we will pick up how many VP one uh, two, uh, and we got third from the wizard. Is that all? Do we just get the three? That's a little disappointing. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, it was a it was a, a it was a quite a bit of a different game from the last time I played this with uh, Ashcan Pete, uh, the return two part anyway. It was uh, I didn't see any of those uh, any of the new cards, so it was pretty much like extracurricular activity normal, and uh, I cruised through it pretty easily. This one was uh, quite a bit different. It put a lot of pressure on uh, a lot of horror pressure early with that light of Afragomon and uh and then drawing the, i thought i had made i wasn't going to draw a copy of beyond the veil this game but uh, it turned out there was one more lurking at the bottom of the uh, encounter deck so uh
Yeah, three VP seems pretty stingy. I agree, but uh, I guess we'll take the three and uh, save it because I want to buy scrapper, and that's going to cost me six. Um, where are the rules for this? Though? Way down at the bottom. So we get our one. Yeah, true True solo is quite a bit different from, I find after you play true solo a lot and then you switch, like I don't play multiplayer all that often unless I'm, uh, unless I'm say streaming, like I was streaming with uh, Tim Fiscus from uh, I've Got a Plan and uh, Nate uh, Winslow from, from the uh, podcast I do with the Great Old Ones Gaming. And uh, so I don't play multiplayer that often unless I'm at, a, at an event like, say, Arkham Knights. So after you play solo a lot and you switch to multiplayer, multiplayer seems almost... Uh, I find it a, a little too... I don't know, I feel like it's too easy sometimes. And it's also... I'm not used to sitting around waiting for my turn. Like, I just want to take my turn right away rather than wait and... Uh, and uh, so everybody's sort of planning around the table. I'm like, well, I know what I want to do. Let's just, uh, I just want to do it. <coughs> uh, I th think Scrapper is six, Lograk. Uh, I can check that, but I think it's six. Uh, so we rescued Warren Rice. We can add him to our deck. Uh, we record investigators fail to save the students. We add a... Uh, a uh, tablet to our deck and we get three VP plus two three base okay well that's a uh, good to know so we're gonna have to earn a few more experience points before we uh, before we uh, get our scrapper because that's the card I want so yeah you're right plus two all right, well, so we know that. So we'll go on. I think we'll play the, uh, we might as well play the House Always Wins as well. And uh, see if we can't uh, beat that one. Uh, just a quick reminder, everyone, that uh, the there are currently two giveaways one is uh, for the uh, Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion. You just need to send me an email at manfromling at gmail.com with the subject line Circle Undone giveaway and the answer to the question, what was the first scenario that I played on, uh, on this uh, channel? And uh, that will be, uh, if you uh, answer the question, we will, you'll be entered into the draw, and uh, you will. Uh, doesn't matter where you are. I will uh, ship you a copy of the Circle Undone. So let's uh, now. I need to uh, figure out. Uh, I need so we get rice. I need to go to my deck editor here and make a couple quick changes to the deck, and then we'll play uh, House Always Wins. Uh, I believe the deck is on my desktop. So yeah, glimmer of hope. I was hoping to uh, to to play with that, but uh, but I didn't see it. So uh, it ended up in my discard pile, but I never got a chance to use it. So so that's not uh, not overly. Uh, thank you very much, Tom uh, Pollock, for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Yeah, it'd be nice to get up to uh, to that 50, uh, 50 followers on uh, Twitch because that opens up some, uh, some options for me uh, if I uh, stream more regularly, which I really enjoy doing. So I will add, I guess I will add a, an indebted to the deck. Okay, and we need to add a tablet. And rice is the other one. So 
So one tablet for failing to rescue the students. And we get Warren Rice for rescuing him. Three VP, yeah, it feels pretty stingy after <laughs> after you play something like the Dream Eaters where it's like, oh, I got 11 VP. That is, uh, yeah, it's, but I mean, that's just because it's a shortened campaign. So you need the, you need that extra VP to, uh, since you're only playing four scenarios instead of eight. Uh, I guess we want to add him into assets. And where is that? Thank you very much, DM Andrew ninety for the uh, follow. Thank you, Jacques Steampunk, for the follow. That's fantastic. You guys helping me out greatly appreciated. Uh, we've added uh, Professor Warren Rice, and I think that is uh, that is all we need to do. So let's reset, and we will save that deck. As Uh, return to the house always wins. Yeah, I, I stream on both uh, YouTube and Twitch uh, using Restream. So, but uh, most of my viewers are still are are on YouTube. So uh, I'm trying to build my Twitch following as well. So I have the benefits of both platforms. All right, so we've loaded, we've saved the deck. We are ready to uh, get started here. And so we will be going. What are your, uh, Samuel asks, what are your thoughts on Dream Eaters so far? I'm really enjoying it story-wise and also the mechanics. Well, Dream Eaters has men from Ling in it, so I'm I'm super uh, super happy with Dream Eaters because it has my people in it, and they uh, uh, yeah I liked I really like um, I had a really rough run through Waking Nightmare as you if you've watched that uh, playthrough, but I really like that scenario. I like the uh, first scenario as well, uh, the Dream Side scenario. Uh, Search for Kadath, I'm kind of. Uh, I like it, but it feels sort of, I haven't really played it enough, I guess, but it, it feels like it's sort of like once you know which locations have the, uh, are the key to the trick, um, it's not that, not that interesting, sort of like you end up playing it the same way every time, but, but I haven't played it really enough to, uh, to, uh, to make, uh, any sort of, reach any sort of conclusions on that. I will be playing that on uh, the channel here shortly. I've also been saving my playthroughs of uh, A Thousand Shapes of Horror and Dark Side of the Moon uh, for the channel, so I haven't played those two yet, but uh, looking forward to it. So we need... The house always wins. It's been a long time, so... Uh, Hi, uh, Witch.com. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, Ash can Pete with Indebted is... Uh, couldn't... Uh, get much more thematic than that poor guy not a not a penny to his name uh, so we need a deck let's find the deck uh, return to the house always wins what is my twitch channel it is uh, twitch.tv slash man from Lang is my twitch channel I believe All right, so we need to figure out how to set this one up because I haven't uh, played this one in return to mode yet. So let us see uh, what is different. Hey, thanks for the follow, Benjamin. Greatly appreciated. Um, 
hopefully it's in here. No, I did not put it in here. Okay, so we have to find we have to find out how to set this up. Uh, echoes, Phantom, Palette Mask, Curtain Call, Last King. Now, do I have my version? There it is. All right. So, perform the setup as indicated by the Dunwich Legacy Campaign Guide. So, I guess we have La Bella Luna. We have the Clover Club Bar. The Card Room. Yeah, the, the uh, Return to Kadath. I, from my understanding... Um, the search for Kadath was one of the, uh, in talking to designer Matt Newman, it was one of the uh, the scenarios that I think he struggled with to to create. And so uh, it sort of feels like two scenarios worth of stuff jammed into one. I mean, it's a tough scenario to design because you obviously want to, to give your players a chance to explore a lot of the dreamlands, but... Uh, there is so much in the dreamlands to explore that uh, you could easily um, just have too much material. And so I don't know whether it was a case of just having too much or whether it was uh, the mechanics of it, but it, it sounded like that was a, that was one of the uh, more difficult scenarios to, uh, to design. Okay, so we've done that. Set the Clover Club stage aside out of play. Choose one of the two Clover Club lounge locations at random. Put the chosen location into play along with the rest of the starting locations. Okay. Yeah, this uh, this scenario can be a real uh, throws a twist at you because investigation is no longer not your primary uh, concern. So our friend, the Clover Club Pit Boss, I believe he is at the bar. If I'm not mistaken. And then we will be ready to go. I want to make sure I've got this set up properly. It's been quite a while since I played this one. Uh, put Clover Club Lounge, Bar, Club Card Room, and Bella Luna. Um, put Pit Boss at Clover Club Lounge. Okay, do I have this screwed up? I think that, yeah, that goes there. That goes there. So lounge, bar, card room. And stage, I guess is the Clover Club bar is connected to the stage. So we go like that, and what expand? Uh, welcome, Melakor, to the stream. Glad you could make it. Uh, I just bought two for just bought two for set to complete my Arkham file collection. What expansion would you recommend for a first time? Oh, I just bought two core sets to complete my Arkham files collection. What expansion would you recommend for the first time player? Um, I think the, uh, the Dunwich legacy is a pretty good starting place. Um, it's the, the, uh, scenarios are a lot, are pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, uh, 
complexity to them, uh, certainly not as much as some of the other ones, although the Path to Carcosa campaign is really, really good. And uh, uh, so I would start with either of those two, and then uh, as you gain some more experience, you can move into uh, Forgotten Age and uh, the Circle Undone and Dream Eaters. Dream Eaters is actually pretty good too for for just starting out. It's, it's a shorter campaign uh, because you're basically playing two four scenario campaigns rather than one eight scenario campaign. And I find that playing the four scenario campaigns uh, a little bit, uh, it's a little bit easier. I find if I play, try to play eight scenarios, it, uh, I usually run out of steam uh, towards the middle. So I don't play the, uh, the final scenarios as often as I'd like. So I think the four scenario campaign is a pretty good idea. So yeah, I'd say Dunwich Path or uh, or Dream Eaters is a good place to go. And then uh, it also depends a bit on which which uh, which class you want to play. The Dunwich uh, has a lot of key cards for Mystics, and uh, a lot of the cards in Dunwich are pretty are still pretty solid to this day. And uh, uh, what's Path got? Path has, has got good player cards too. I would sort of uh, avoid Forgotten Age because it's it's a little bit uh, it's a tougher campaign. And uh, I would if depending whether you're playing solo or with a group, I'd stay away from the Circle Undone because it really favors multiplayer over solo. And uh, if you're playing solo, you're gonna have a bad time in some of those uh, some of those things. So I chose a lounge location. I have actually a couple of, uh, subscribers. We had uh, uh, I am Biencel and uh, Blue Moon. Thank you very much for the uh, follows on Twitch. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, TCU has really good player cards as well. Like all the player cards are generally solid. There's not a lot of of, of dud uh, player cards in this game, which is really nice. They all sort of have found a home in one deck or another. So I've chosen a lounge location, put the chosen lounge into play, remove the other Clover Club lounge. Okay, so the stage is connected to the, the bar is connected to the stage. Well, yeah, no, Kukri is not. I've seen it in decks, but I wouldn't say it's it's a card that you're purchasing an expansion for. That's for sure. There are a few uh, a few uh, decks a few cards out there that are not uh, not super good. So Clover Club Bar is connected to Clover Club Stage. And the Clover Club Lounge. Okay, so I'm slowly getting my handle on this uh, location placement. All right, let's go to Bella Luna here. Two shroud location with one clue. We know all this stuff. Hi, Blue Moon. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, for making it out to uh, to see the playthrough. Um, yeah, really appreciate the follow. We are uh, there are a couple of before we get started. There are a couple of contests that are going on. You can pick yourself up a copy of the Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion uh, if you uh, send a uh, an email to manfromling at gmail .com, or sorry, yeah, gmail .com, uh, with the subject line. Uh, Circle Undone giveaway and uh, the name of the first scenario that I played on uh, uh, on this channel way back when, three years ago today. So uh, if you can answer that question, then you can win yourself a uh, win your win yourself a uh, a free deluxe expansion. So I think we're ready to go here. If I've set this up properly. And 
Uh, we will draw our starting hand. Yeah, you've got to have cards for the memes too. That's that's true. Uh, so we've got winging it. Uh, we don't need that. We don't need the coat, the fight or flight, or the winging it. So we're going to take four cards. Track shoes, Madame La Branche, a lucky, and a magnifying glass. That's a pretty awesome hand. A pretty awesome hand. Uh, so... Uh, let me see something quickly before I start, and then we will be, uh, be ready to go. Yeah, the shoes will be nice, uh, definitely nice for, uh, to try to grab Peter Clover. Uh, my record of getting Peter is, pr I don't think I've, I think I've done it once maybe, so that'll be, uh, that will be, uh, interesting. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of a skill testing question for our next giveaway. And uh, let me see. Thank you, Harley2068, for the follow. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Um... What can I do for a starting question? Uh, a special question. Um, trying to think of something that isn't too hard. There's a lot of esoteric stuff that I could ask, but that's not going to get you a. Uh, that's not going to get you. Uh, uh, actually, I think we'll just go without the skill testing question for this one, so everybody has a chance. We are giving away, so I am giving away this playmat from Arkham Knights 2019. Uh, this was uh, available from the uh, Mythos Busters if you played in the Iron Man at Arkham Knights 2019. I'll just uh, pan it across the camera here. Hopefully everybody can get a good look at it and it's not being knocked out by the green screen too badly. So if you would like to enter the uh, contest for this uh, playmat, just send me an email again at manfromlearning at gmail.com with the uh, subject line playmat giveaway and uh, your name will be entered. I'll put the uh, that address in the... Uh, it's transparent. Well, it looks really good. It looks great. The playmat looks really good. Just take my word for it. Yeah, elusives would definitely help. So just send me your send me an email uh, with playmat giveaway, and uh, you'll be entered into the draw. Yes, it is the playmat with the Yithian investigators on it. It looks really cool. I believe the art was done by Stokes Book, who has done a lot of for the uh, Arkham Horror as well as the uh, Lord of the Rings uh, community. A lot of art. So. Uh, uh, send me an email with that playmat uh, giveaway and your name, and I will be uh, drawing for a winner. All right. I think we're ready to play this one. Let's see how we do. We've got a really good hand. So I think we will play... Um, do I want arcane studies or I think we'll play um, hmm no we're gonna play LeBranche first I think as our first action we will play the magnifying glass for free second action we will investigate Five versus uh, two. Chaos Bag says Skull. That is a minus two. And uh, so we pass and grab this clue. Now, I'm going to take a resource here. Uh, no, actually, LeBranche gets me a resource. And then I'm going to... I 
I want to get the track shoes and the arcane stuff. I'm going to take another resource because I want this. I want the pit boss to come to me so I can get away from him. So we'll sit here at Bella Luna for a turn. So during the enemy phase, the pit boss makes his way to us. We draw a copy of Fight or Flight. And we're ready for our first Mythos phase. One of four. First encounter card is something in the drinks. Surge, each player who has had a drink loses an action. Well, that whiffs. So it's just going to surge into Raise the Stakes. This is one of the new cards from the Return to set. You must choose one. Remember that you have cheated. Lose five resources. Put Raise the Stakes into play in your threat area. It gains each criminal enemy at your location. Loses aloof. If it is act two or three, each criminal enemy engaged with you gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Hmm. That's a um, choice. Well, we're not going to choose the we're not going to choose the last one. Um. Now, what happens here? We immediately advance if we attack him, so that's not good. So we have to remember we cheated or we lose five resources. I guess we cheated. Sure. We'll probably pay for it later, but that's fine. I want the resources. So we're going to play... Uh, track shoes. And so we're going to move to the Clover Club Lounge, to Shroud Location. Uh, while it is Act 1, Clover Club Lounge gains action. Discard an ally asset from your hand. Gain two clues from the token pool. Okay, and we need four clues, so we should have saved LeBron. She would have been handy, but that's fine. Um, now we can use our track shoes here. So we can exhaust the track shoes to go four versus three to see if we can move again. That's an auto fail, so that's not going to happen. And then we'll just move to the Clover Club bar. Three Shroud location. While it is Act 1, Clover Card Bane, spend two resources, gain two clues from the token pool, and draw two cards. Remember that you've had a drink. We'll use LeBranche to get some money. And that will be our turn during the enemy phase. The Clover Club pit boss follows us. And we draw a take heart during the upkeep phase. And we will uh, go to the mythos phase, which is uh, going to get us another card. Sorry, I just need to check something on my phone. People are sending me messages. And yeah. All right, so yeah, I already cheated, so you can draw the chaos token you want each round. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so uh, mythos phase, right? We were drawing a card, which was going to be another raise the stakes. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Uh, you must choose one. I, I still cheated. There's nothing that says I can't choose that one again, right? I can keep cheating. Sure. All right, well, I cheated. I cheated a lot. Cheated a lot here. Uh, so we can spend two resources to gain two clues and draw two cards. So let's do that. Draw two cards. We get a resourceful and a cherished keepsake. Uh, now this thing, 
Silver Cup bar is connected to the stage. I haven't been to the stage. Let's use Duke just to duke into the stage here. See if there's something. Uh, Clover Club bar is connected to the stage. Want to spend one resource, place that resource on Clover Club stage. If there is one resource on Clover Club stage, gain one clue from the token pool. Limit once per game. Uh, okay, so we can spend a resource, but we can get a resource from La Branche. And then we can spend it. Uh, it's a free, uh, yeah, we need to take an action to spend a resource to put it on the stage. And then we can take a free triggered ability since there is one resource per investigator on Clover Club stage gain one clue from the token pool. So we gain another clue. So now we can advance. They must immediately advance. All right. Hi, Mark W. Welcome to the stream. Yes, obviously cat people. For sure. And why wouldn't you let a dog into a casino? I mean, that's obvious. He's uh, Ashcan's uh, service animal in this case. So we put the darkened hall into play. Uh, let's see. Where is the darkened hall? Uh, I think it's over here. Uh, darkened Hall into play. We're going to need those shortly anyway. So we'll grab those. So we put the Darkened Hall into play. If it is Agenda 1, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a criminal enemy is discarded and spawn that enemy at the, dark at the Darkened Hall. Uh, there's some rats, a couple copies of Hunted Down, Twisted Fate, there's a mobster at the Darkened Hall. All right. And that is all. So we advance to the next act. Skin game 2A, only investigators in the VIP area may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So we need two clues. Thank you very much, Kibble Nader, for the follow. You rock. Thank you very much for thank you very much for everyone for the uh, for the follows on Twitch. That's uh, that's great. It really helps out the channel uh, a great deal. Uh, we'll be at uh, Twitch uh, affiliate status in no time flat at this rate. So uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, Halo Brock 99 can't wait for Barkham Horror. Yeah, I think everybody is uh, uh, can't wait for Barkham Horror. It's going to be uh, a great deal of fun. Uh, so we have to... So the Clover Club stage is not connected to the Clover Club card room. So we're going to have to go back to the lounge. That's fine. So he'll stay put. Thank you very much, Hippie Crap, for the uh, for the uh, follow. Wow, man with the beard again for the follow. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Um, wow, yeah, you're you're blowing me away here. Uh, so we are. So he is going to stay put. And we draw our uh, our weakness, racked by nightmares, as our first, uh, as our card. So assets we control cannot ready. So we'll have to get rid of that pretty quickly. And, oh, I could have uh, 
track shoot. Yeah, I should have track shoot. Let's try track shoes quickly because we could have made it uh, four three. That's a minus two. So yeah, we don't. Uh, we could spend two resources, but we didn't have two, so that's fine. So we tried to track shoes out. That's fine. All right, go to the next uh, three of four on the uh, on the uh, Clover Club uh, on Agenda One A. Encounter card is going to be Arousing Suspicion. Place one Doom on each criminal enemy at your location. If no Doom was placed by this effect, lose two resources. So well, that's fine with us because uh, we were going to be advancing next turn anyway. So we still need two. We need two clues and we need to be at the VIP area. So let's move to the Clover Club card room. Three shroud location. Spend two resources. Reveal a random chaos token. If it is the elder sign symbol, gain two clues and two resources from the token pool. If it is an even number, gain two clues. If it is odd, nothing happens. So I believe we can still cheat, can't we? Or no, we can't cheat anymore. Uh, I believe that was on one of the... It's been a while since I played this one, so it's... Uh... Yeah, okay, yeah, it is on that card. So we can't cheat here. Um, do we want to spend our two resources or just get our clues the old-fashioned way? Uh, I don't see any point in gambling here, so let's just uh, use the track shoes uh, to try to get to the darkened hallway. Uh, we're going four versus three. Chaos bag says Elder Sign. That's nice. Uh, if we had used Duke, that's a plus two. So we track shoes in to the darkened hallway. Uh, we want to get rid of... Uh, Darken Hallway is a three, a four shroud location. We pull out the back hall doorways, so we'll do that now. Oh, you're right. Uh, yes, you're, you are correct. So we have to go back. That's exhausted, that's exhausted, that's exhausted, that's exhausted. Uh, so we were here. Let's go back here for a second. Uh, so we would, I guess what we'd have to do is spend two actions to get rid of that. And then we'll use one action to move up to Clover Club card room. So the pit boss is going to come to us next turn, but there's not much we can do to avoid that. So we will go there. Yeah, so quick turn. Enemy phase, the Clover Club bo pit boss comes to visit. We draw a cherished keepsake. Uh, no, we haven't gone to upkeep yet. We draw Professor Warren Rice as our uh, draw during the encounter phase. And we are gonna advance this turn. Four of four. So we are advancing and we're going to double advance. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Sure. We will do that. Uh, if the players have completed extracurricular activity, advance to agenda 2B. So now things get crazy. Spawn a random enemy from the set aside hideous abominations encounter set in the Clover Club lounge. So I believe this is it here. Uh, so we're just gonna go, we've got two conglomerations and the servant of the lurker. So we'll just go one, two, three. We'll just pick a random number. Uh, three. Randomly selects three. So we get the servant. Uh, at the Clover Club Lounge is where he goes. 
and then we shuffle everything back in to the uh, in, and the encounter discard pile and Bella Luna is removed so uh, move all to encounter deck and we're ready to go here Okay, so we are on, on agenda 3A, seven turns at the start of the enemy phase, e discard each criminal enemy at the same location as an abomination enemy. What does this guy do again? He's big and tough, isn't he? Uh, tax you, we discard cards, that's no, not a big deal. He's got five though and he's four hell, he's uh, four fight, so he's pretty tough. Uh, we do have some means to get away from him though. Uh, we've got the track shoes which is giving us four agility right now, so that's good. And the criminals lose aloof. So he is with us. Anything else that has to happen? I think we just draw an encounter card, do we not? Which is going to be something in the drinks. Uh, we did have a drink, so we lose an action. And that surges into a rats. So we end up with a couple enemies. Uh, David McAndrew asked, did you see the spoilers for the Weaver of the Cosmos player cards? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, lots of crazy stuff in there. Um, the Mystic cards uh, in particular were pretty zany. The, uh, that uh, that uh, Guardian one, that uh, the Myriad one that absorbs, uh, can absorb a ton of damage and horror. Yeah, this just went from, uh, it just got really bad. It sure did. Um, it's going to be tough to get out of this one, I think. We've got this guy chasing us. We've got a bunch of enemies. We've only got two actions uh, to defeat this guy. Uh, we can kill. Uh, so what have we take two damage and two horror, and the pit boss would be dead but we wouldn't get the VP out of it. Or we take four damage and two horror. So our choice is take four damage and two horror or three damage and two horror. If we can kill the pit boss. Wow, that's not good at all. Um, yeah, getting 2 VP for Scrapper is going to be tough here. Maybe if I can, if I do end up dying, I could, as long as I die in the darkened hallway, that wouldn't be bad, but killing that Servant of the Lurker is going to be really difficult with Duke. Um... And I could just draw another conglomeration here next turn anyway, and that would put me in a huge hole. Um, fight or flight doesn't do me any good in this in this uh, situation because I have no horror on us. Yeah, I feel like I've got to kill the pit boss, and then. Uh, We'll just have to see how it plays. There's so much that could go wrong here at this point. Uh, true. Although I may need the Lucky to kill the Pit Boss since I do not have a ton of uh, cards in my hand here. But let's, let's play it out. We have two actions. First action, uh, we will use Duke to attack the Pit Boss. Duke shakes off his, his service uh, dog gear and goes on the attack. Um, so he is a, we are a four versus three. Uh, I'm going to commit Professor Warren Rice to that. So we're going to go 
uh, five versus three. Chaos bag says minus four. Ugh. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That was like, I think there were only two tokens. What was I at? Four, five. No, there were quite a few tokens still. Cultist token could have hurt me. One, two, three, four tokens. I don't think I can cheat still. The uh, I'm not on the uh, the cheating is on a on Act One A, so I can't cheat. I just get pummeled. So. Uh, yeah, the lucky. Uh, that would solve that. So the lucky gets us two damage on this giant, on this guy. Uh, we need to discard a card. Uh, the fighter, I think that's uh, two damage and two horror. Um, I think it's got to be the arcane studies. So we get rid of, we ready Duke, and we have one action left. So we will go four versus three, resourceful to go five versus three. So all we can do, chaos bag says. Cultus, that's a minus three. Oh, for Pete's sakes. <sighs> yeah, that didn't uh, didn't get me quite enough. That would have got me my lucky back too. So we are gonna take a ton of damage here. We really needed to kill that pit boss and uh, unfortunately we did not. So, what happens here? At the start of the enemy phase, discard each criminal. So he's not going to die till next turn. Uh, so he... So we're taking... 2, 3, 4, 5 damage. And 2 horror. So LeBranche bites it. And I take three damage. All right, well, we're still alive. Uh, yeah, you're right. No, you're right. I should, uh, I should, I need that fight or flight, don't I? Uh, so I will take the two horror, um, so I've got to spread one damage there, one damage there, and two horror there. So that keeps LeBranche alive for a turn. And that gives us something to do with fight or flight next turn. Okay, well, we draw another copy of Arcane Studies. We go to the next Mythos phase, which is going to be bad, is it? Uh, cursed luck, minus one skill value to all skill tests. Mm, well, it's not another enemy. That's a good thing, I guess. Um, let's see, what do we do now? Just need to uh, check my messages here quickly. We are at uh, 44 followers on uh, Twitch. I just need six more to hit that 50 mark. So if uh, if anybody out there is, uh, isn't following me on Twitch, uh, head over there now and we will uh, we can hit that 50 today. That would be awesome. Yeah, that is a very spicy thread area. Uh, I think we just uh, we may just end up dying here, but. Uh,
the kill the rats, evade the lurker. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can do. And then the pit boss dies. I'm not going to get anything out of this uh, out of this scenario. Thank you very much, uh, Loxic Gaming, for the follow. Awesome. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Varric, for the follow. We're just uh, how far are we now? Uh, we are. 46 followers, so four followers away. Uh, if we can get to that 50, that would be awesome. Thanks, uh, thank you very much, guys, for your for your support. You've been uh, amazing, not just today, but over the past three years. Try to kill the pit boss to get the VP. Um, I could kill pit boss, evade lurker, kill rats. That might. That might do it. Uh, we do have the fight or flight, which are... The fight or flight will help us here. So have I drawn a mythos? Yes, I drew the curse luck. Okay, so now we go to... Uh, thank you much. Thank you very much, Be Prophet, for the follow. You're uh, awesome. The, uh, yeah, the, the one thing about this community is that it is uh, incredibly supportive of all the content creators. I know I had a conversation with uh, Doovies just last week. He reached out to uh, the content creators and, uh, and uh, had a chat with us about a, a subject. And, you know, there, I don't think there are, you know, it, it was uh, fantastic to see that sort of support. He wanted to check with us about something and, uh, yeah, you know, it just shows uh, that uh, the community thinks about what uh, what all the content creators are doing out there, whether you're a YouTuber like myself or whether you're putting out podcasts like the Mythos Busters or uh, Drawn to the Flame or Miskatonic University or anybody out there, great old ones who are... Uh, uh, David, uh, I am at... Uh, I am at man. Is it Twitch? Uh... Thank you very much, Bell uh, Wolvey, for the follow. Uh... Yeah, the channel is Man from Lang on Twitch. Thank you very much, Vaca Palbrey, for the follow. We're so close, just one to go. And. Uh... Okay, so we've got to deal with this situation. We've got to kill the pit boss. Uh, did I spend a resource? I did. So we are getting uh, Duke puts us at four. Minus one is for the cursed luck plus two. So we're at uh, five versus three. This guy doesn't have retaliate. Five versus three. I feel like I pitched the the take heart to this just in case, because at least I'll get a couple cards that way. So five versus three. Chaos bag says minus one. So the pit boss is dead. So we're gonna get a VP out of this. Take heart was wasted, but that's fine. Um, now we need to evade the lurker. Uh, minus what? Did I pass by one? I did. Okay, I get to discard the cursed luck too. Uh, so we can evade the lurker. We are at four versus two. Uh, we are at six versus two. That's pretty good. Six versus two, and we get a plus one, so he is evaded. And then we'll pitch this Arcane Studies to Ready Duke to kill the rats. Uh, six versus one, minus three, rats are dead. And we have... Uh, You'll get an extra VP for no resolution if you die here. You'll reflect on this night's events. 
That's true. That's true. And, and yeah, I forgot about that. It's almost better to die. Yeah, I probably, yeah, you're right, David. I would have drawn the auto fail if I hadn't committed that take heart. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that, that getting no, uh, no resolution in this is sometimes better than actually getting the resolution. But we did make it out of that mess. So we will get Scrapper. We, we needed one VP at least, and we've got that now. Uh, just want to take a moment here to remind everybody there's three contests going on right now. Count them three. Uh, the first one, if you can tell me the name of the first scenario that I played on this uh, channel, uh, you can win yourself a copy of the uh, Citadel uh, Circle Undone Deluxe Box. You just send me an email to manfromleng at gmail.com with uh, Circle Undone giveaway in the subject line with the name of the scenario that I played and you'll win that. Uh, if you send me an email with the uh, uh, subject line playmat giveaway, you will be entered into the draw for the super cool uh, Mythos Busters playmat that was uh, sold at uh, Arkham Knights 2019, featuring the Mythos Busters as Yithians. And uh, Robert Bout, uh, a patron of the channel, and uh, I had a chance to play with Robert actually at uh, Arkham Knights. That was fantastic. Robert has chipped in a copy of Point of No Return, the uh, latest uh, scenario in the Dream Eater cycle, just send me an email with a point of no return giveaway and uh, you will be entered into a draw for that, uh, that, uh, that pack. So good stuff. Thank you very much, Robert, for, for your generosity. Thank you very much, Doobies, for the, uh, for the tip. That's my, uh, I'll remember that one. I'm not gonna, uh, that's my first tip on Twitch, so. Uh, nice to uh, to have and we made it out of that turn so things are looking up uh, let's see if we can keep the momentum going here we get a deny existence so we get this guy back now I think we can probably evade him for the rest of the game if we can depends if we draw another conglomeration though uh, two of seven and we get a raise the stakes again I've cheated I, I've cheated game I cheated I know I did I cheated I've cheated three times now whoops what's going on here uh, I keep cheating um, all right so we've got three actions we need to evade we need to Oh, we need those location. Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. So once we get to the darkened hallway, we can put the mobster into play. Uh, we can deal with the mobster. Um, so we need to kill him. Uh, evade, move, kill, I think is what we're doing. So we will go evade the servant of the lurker uh, we are going four versus two i do not have anything else i can add to that uh, chaos bag says auto fail see i didn't commit the take heart if i had committed the take heart i wouldn't have drawn the auto fail i didn't have a take heart but if uh, anybody has, if you guys have watched my uh, playthroughs of Waking Nightmare and uh, particularly the adventures of Joe Diamond and uh, Roland Banks uh, through the depths of Yoth, you know that the, uh, the auto fail token and I have a, a bit of a, a bit of a love hate relationship, mostly hate, mostly hate on the, uh, on the part of the, uh, of the auto fail token. It, uh, yeah, it's uh, bad news. So now I can't... I guess I can track... If I can evade him, move, track shoes past the mobster to a location, that would help. So let's evade again. Four versus two. Chaos bag says that's a minus three. 
Oh, man. So I'm just going to spend an entire turn here just trying to evade this guy. Uh, four versus two. There we get a... There we get a, an Elder Sign. So that's plus two. So he's evaded, but that doesn't really do us a whole lot of good because he just comes right back. Uh, okay, um, there we go. Okay, so we drew a magnifying glass. Um, in my play group recently, someone played Seal of the Seventh Sign. It was nice for an old auto to be out for a bit. Seems like a turn right after it went back in and got pulled, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the way with the auto fail. It uh, never fails to show up. It certainly spanked me in uh, in uh, the depths of Yoth and uh, Waking Nightmare. So four of seven doom. I feel like I added one too many doom. Turn nine. Just want to check something. I feel like it's added one too many doom, but uh, no, it's right. Four of seven are we get another cursed luck, so we're minus one. Should it be only three doom? It feels like I have one too many doom. Turn nine. Uh, just let me check. Maybe I. Uh, what am I looking for? That would be two through six. Yeah, there should only be three. You're right. There should be three. All right. Cursed luck, so we have to somehow get past this. Um, we are now going three versus two. That's not great. Chaos Bag says tablet. That is a minus two, and if you fail, discard three resources. Man, uh, I just don't have anything to... Three versus two, Chaos Bag gives us a plus one. Oh, that's huge. So that gets rid of the Cursed Luck as well. A timely plus one there. Uh, so we can now move away to the Darkened Hallway, and we're going to try to track shoes past the... Uh, so we put the three backdoor locations into play. Uh, that's not one of them. Okay, so we've got three backdoor locations. We're going to track shoes past this chump. Uh, four versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two, so we we skip past... Uh, no, it was four versus three, sorry. Okay, so four versus three, so we don't... Uh, we don't succeed, so he is just going to be engaged with us and hit us for a damage. We'll drop it on her. And we go to... Upkeep, we draw a rabbit's foot, we go to Mythos 4 of 7, and we draw a hunted down. If there are no unengaged enemy criminals enemies in play, hunted down gains surge. If there are one or more unengaged criminal enemies in play, each of them moves. Uh, so there are no unengaged hunter en enemy criminal. Whoops, that was bad. I uh, deleted that, so we'll just draw a card the old fashioned way. We get Need for Knowledge. This is one of the new cards. Haven't seen this. If you have no clues, Need for Knowledge gains Surge. 
Otherwise, test x where x equals the numbers, so it just surges. Okay, so that does nothing. And we get twist of fate, reveal a random token from the chaos bag. It's an elder sign. Uh, nothing happens. So that worked out. So we've got the servant of the lurker coming after us now. Uh, Duke is going to try to kill this dude. Uh, we're going to go four versus two. Uh, four versus two or five versus two. No, I'd rather save it for... This guy's got retaliate, but I've got to deny existence. So four, two, we get a minus two. So the mobster dies. Duke chews him up. Uh, we can discard the rabbit's foot. Oh, it's got a wild icon. Um, the keepsake to ready. No, I'm going to get rid of the magnifying glass. Uh, we'll get rid of the magnifying glass to ready Duke. And we will Duke into this location. It is the VIP area. Three shroud location with one clue while you're at VIP area. You cannot draw cards or gain resources during the upkeep phase. Okay. So we will draw. Uh, we're going five versus three for the clue. We get a zero, so we get a clue. We need one more clue. Uh, and that gets us a VP too. Um, I think we move back and we track shoes. Um, four versus three. Say we go five versus three. Chaos bag says minus one. So we track shoes into this location and it is the back alley. So resign, we can get out this way. I have found the back alley and I can get out. Unbelievable. After that mess, after that horrific mess earlier where we had uh, a servant, the, the pit boss, a cursed luck, and a, uh, and a rat, we now have found the back alley. Uh, so we will get, uh, n no, we will only get two, Samuel, because if I resign at the back alley, I drop any clues I have at the back alley so you don't get the victory point. You don't get the victory point when if you resign there because the clues get dropped on it. Um... If I can advance, only investigators in the VIP area may. So I, if I can get back to the VIP area, grab this clue, VIP, advance, get out. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens here. If we draw another enemy, this guy's now sitting at the uh, sitting at the darkened hallway, and we draw an overpower. Uh, too bad I don't have more direct damage. 
five of seven. So I have two turns. Let's see what we draw for an encounter card. It is, oh, I did that, didn't I? We get violent commands. Put violent commands into your play area, into your threat area. Deal two damage to an investigator at your location and discard violent commands at your at the end of your turn. Test three willpower. If you fail, take one horror. Okay. Not the worst thing in the world for sure. Uh, we need to. Um. Okay, so if we go move, track shoes, if you make it to seven doom on agenda, you get two VP also in the interlude. Yeah, let me check this. I want to see what... Uh... So if everybody dies... I'd earn one bonus experience point. So I'd get th three. Um... Yeah, so I'll get three if I can. And I would take some sort of trauma, presumably. Let me math this out here. So move, if I can track shoes over, I'd have two actions. I could go, then I could spend the clues one two yeah taking out the lurker is tough though um because I only have, Duke only hits him, I'd have to hit him three times and I can't get in there to do it this turn. I'm going to get the 2 VP anyway. Is 3 VP better? Is it worth a trauma? Is 3 VP ver worth a trauma if I don't get out? Alternatively, I could simply uh, no. I think I'm going to go for it because I think I've got enough. I think I've got enough. Uh, yeah, Samuel, I did it too. I think everybody has has cheated in this scenario at one point or another because they didn't understand or didn't realize that. If you drop your clues on the back alley, you don't get that VP. I, I know I did that the first time I played this, and probably the second and third time as well. It's one of those sort of obscure, obscure rules that uh, doesn't come into play all that often. Oh, I need this clue, though. That's the thing. Um... Can I do it? Grab clue. One. I've got the deny existence, which could save me. And then I could always just take an attack of opportunity to resign. Ah, let's go for it. Let's grab this clue. Um, 
Is three versus one enough? Three versus one, Chaos Bag says Elder Sign. So we grab a clue. Uh, we will go move. Um, track shoes. So he will attack me. I would deny existence it. Evade, move, move. It's going to be very tight. Not much room for error. Uh, track shoes. So we're going four versus three. I don't have anything else I can pitch to that, unfortunately. Chaos bag says skull. That's a minus two, but you can spend two resources to treat it as a zero. Absolutely. Uh, so we grab, okay, grabbed a clue for one action, moved for the second action, got to the VIP area, we advance to drop our clues. Okay, we have completed extracurricular activity, put the set aside Peter Clover into play at the bar. Uh, where's Peter? Is this him? There he is. He is at the bar. And search the deck for an abomination enemy and spawn it at the bar. Okay, abomination enemy at the bar. No, I don't think Peter is going to make it out. I think we'll be lucky if we make it out. Um, so I would take... Two damage and two horror. Um, well, right now I'm getting 4 XP if I fail. Because I'll get one for the VP, one for VIP area, one for back alley, one for uh, pit boss, and one for the other guy. Uh, one for the no resolution. So that's okay. It's just a matter of if I move... I've already used my track shoes. Just wondering whether I wait for this guy to come. Resign, move, track shoes, resign. I can do it. <laughs> it's very close. Um, I'm just wondering whether I move back to the darkened hall or not. If I move back to the darkened hall, the servant hits me. I deny existence. Uh 
Yeah, I think I moved back. So I'm testing four, three, four versus three, or I take a horror. Uh, Chaos Bag gives me a minus one, so I'm not taking horror from Violent Commands. That dude attacks me. I deny existence. Um, two damage. I can take the horror. One, two. Yeah, I deny existence the damage. Whoops. And put two horror on Duke. And then if we. F um, next turn, we just move and resign. We take the attack of opportunity and we resign. Uh, he attacked us. We draw a lucky. We draw an encounter card. Oh, I hate when I do that. We draw another violent commands. We are incredibly violent. <laughs> Duke and uh, Ashcan are incredibly violent right now. Uh, Duke is foaming at the mouth, something fierce. And I think we get out, boys. Because we can move, take the attack of opportunity. Uh, Lebranche takes a damage and a horror. And I take a damage and a horror, because I don't want to kill Duke. And no, Duke's still alive. And I resign. So we make it out with uh, three VPs. Probably cheat. Well, we yeah we could have. Uh, uh, what do we get out of that? I think we probably we didn't take the. Uh, uh, let me see. Is it no resolution even if I resign or not? Uh, Uh, if each end in undefeated oh so we do get a so we get uh, we get our one I did make it I did make it in the end so uh, we get our one out of that after that mess and uh so we, we did cheat. Uh, Captain Morgan, or Captain Morgan, Francis Morgan was kidnapped. We add a, uh, an Elder Sign token to the Chaos Bag. Uh, we gain, oh, we gain a bonus too out of that. We still gain the bonus, so we gain four XP out of it. So we did, uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you very much, Follimus. Thank you very much, Lograk. And uh, Blue Moon, yeah, we did make it with your uh, with your guys' help. We uh, we made it out of the house always wins with four VP and no trauma, even though we were uh, at the end of the game incredibly violent due to the violent commands, and we had a lurker on us. Uh, we made it out with uh, one doom to spare. So uh, a very good game, yeah, very close there. I thought for sure I was uh, my goose was cooked when I had the the lurker. Uh, pit boss, rats, cursed luck, uh, that was not looking good at all. Uh, but we made it through it with uh, your guys' help, and we end up uh, making it out. So next up is going to be uh, Miskatonic uh, Museum. and uh, But I think we will be saving that. Uh, it's almost three hours now, so I think we will be saving that for a future, uh, for a future stream. 
So once again, thank you very much everyone for joining me here on the third anniversary of the Whisper in Darkness uh, YouTube channel. It has been a labor of love since the beginning and uh, the support that the community has uh, given me over the years has been absolutely tremendous and uh, I couldn't do it without you. There are many times uh, as you're sort of working alone as a content creator, you wonder to yourself, is it all worth it? And uh, whenever I get a, a positive comment or a like or uh, I get to chat with a, a member of the, the community, uh, it is. It is absolutely worth it. And uh, I am, uh, it's been uh, fantastic uh, meeting people at events like Arkham Knights 2019 uh, or at Beneath the Waves in Portland. People have come up to me and, and thanked me for my work, and it's always great. And I'm glad that everyone was here to help me through these two, uh, these two games. We're doing, uh, we've got a good start to the campaign. We'll see if we can't finish it off uh, in fine style. Uh, just a quick reminder that uh, we have three giveaways going on. If you, uh, I will put uh, my email address in the uh, chat again. And uh, if you, the first one is the Circle Undone Deluxe Box. Send me an email with that in the subject line and uh, the name of the first scenario I played on the channel, and you will be entered in to win that uh, deluxe box. The second is for the playmat featuring the three Yithians that was available at Arkham Knights 2019. Just a playmat giveaway in the subject line and no skill testing question for that. And uh, Robert Bout, a patron of the channel, has been kind enough to donate a copy of Point of No Return. So if you put that in the subject line and uh, I will enter you into a draw for that. Thanks, uh, thanks again, everyone, for the follows on Twitch. It uh, means a great deal to me. We're, I think we're at 50 or we're very, very close. So uh, that is fantastic. And uh, I will be back uh, later this week, I think. On Friday, I'll be recording something for sure. And then we've got uh, playthroughs, reviews, and whatnot uh, coming. So here's to a, uh, another three years. We'll, uh, we'll keep it going. Uh, I think this is video 249, so yeah, that's a lot of, that's a hell of a lot more videos than I thought I was ever going to put out, that's for sure. So I am going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much, everyone, and I hope that you have a, uh, a fantastic, uh, fantastic day, and uh, thanks for helping uh, make this uh, celebration a, uh, a good one. It was fun. And uh, I will see you again uh, here in the next couple days with, uh, with more Arkham Horror content. Stay tuned. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.